Would you pray with me? God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful ceremony of marriage. We thank you for Daniel, for Jennifer, for their family and friends who are gathered here today. And we thank you for your love for us that sent Jesus Christ to the cross for us. As this is a marriage ceremony that uh, is Christ-centered, we desire this to be a worship service where you are central. We pray that you would be honored and glorified by everything that happens today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome friends and family of Daniel and Jennifer to witness this special day as they enter into the covenant of marriage. In Genesis 2 verse 20 and following, Scripture records the creation and the definition of marriage by God. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Great. Before you are seated, go ahead, yes, shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hand her off, shake hands, join their hands, and you can return to your seat. Before you're seated, Daniel and Jennifer ask that we sing together the hymn be Thou My Vision. I believe words were handed to everybody as you came in. Let's just sing that together. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought. sleeping thy presence my light be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord thou my great father and I thy true Son, Thou in me dwelling, and I with Thee one. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and Thou. King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, seated. I have two verses to share with Daniel and Jennifer today. The first is on wisdom and is taken from Proverbs 3, 1 through 18. Daniel and Jennifer, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. 
that it will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, Daniel and Jennifer, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Daniel and Jennifer, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father the son he delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies Nothing you desire can compare with her. Daniel and Jennifer, long life is in her right hand. In her left are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. And finally, some verses on love from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not honor, dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for your love. Lord, we thank you for Daniel and for Jennifer, for the fine young man and fine young woman you've caused them to be. Father, we pray not just for this wedding ceremony, that we do want you to be here and to be honored in it, but we pray also and especially for their marriage, that you lead them and guide them every step of the way, that you Help them to honor you in everything and that they keep you as the very central focal point of their marriage every day of their lives. Lord, we ask that you please bless them, cause them to be a good godly husband and a good godly wife that honor you. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, guys, busy week, huh? Finished final exams Monday and Tuesday. You did finish all your school, yeah. right? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Good. Good. Graduation festivities Thursday for both of you. Rehearsal yesterday, and uh, here we are. It's your wedding day. Did you ever think it was going to come? I'm sure that for a long time it felt a long ways off, and that now suddenly you're here, and the rain has stopped just in time for the ceremony and it's all going to be perfect. But you know what, even if it isn't perfect, you'll still be just as married at the conclusion of the ceremony, right? <laughs> yes. Well guys, it's been a, a pleasure getting to know you both, and I especially like the fact that as students, away from home, you made a conscious choice to be involved in a local church while you were away at school. And you didn't just attend. You invested your talents and skills, and you've both been a wonderful blessing to our church. Suzanne and I have enjoyed hearing both of your stories and learning how God brought the two of you together. And He's brought you together from two different states, Vermont and North Carolina, two different families, two different backgrounds, two different life experiences. But today, you're going to become one. Daniel, take a look at your beautiful bride. <laughs> this is the day that she's dreamed of since she was a little girl. And I probably don't have to tell you this, but I'm going to anyway, that wedding day is all about the bride, right? <laughs> but I want to take a few minutes and focus our attention from the bride to God. This is a worship service, and as such, we want God to be at the very center of it all. 
Ephesians 5, 21 through 33, we talked about this passage in your premarital counseling, but it's the passage of Scripture that I want to talk about today. It's the longest statement in the entire New Testament on marriage and on the whole relationship of husbands and wives. For the sake of time, I'm just going to paraphrase it. The passage says that husbands and wives are to submit, first of all, to one another out of reverence for Christ. Then wives are to submit to their husbands as the church submits to Christ. Husbands are to love their wives in the same way that Christ loved the church. And just as Christ makes the church holy through his word, husbands are to spiritually feed for and care for their wives. Then Paul quotes the Genesis 2 passage I read earlier about a man leaving his father and mother to be united with his wife to become one flesh. But then Paul puts a twist on it, and he says that he's actually referring to Christ and the church. Then the passage ends with an exhortation for husbands to love their wives and for wives to respect their husbands. So Daniel, did you know that the responsibility for love within your relationship to Jennifer lies with you? Nowhere in this passage are wives commanded to love their husbands. But you are commanded to love Jennifer the way that Christ loves the church. How does Christ love the church? He gave himself up for her. Philippians chapter 2 says that Jesus emptied himself and became nothing. He laid down his rights and privileges of, as the Son of God and was obedient even to death on a cross. The word love here is the word agape in the Greek. I'm sure we've all heard it if we've been around the church long, but it's the highest form of love. It's a self-sacrificing love. That means to love Jennifer as Christ loved the church. You must give yourself up and empty yourself of your rights and privileges. That's how you to love Jennifer. There's another responsibility that rests on you, Daniel. Just as Jesus took on the responsibility for the spiritual well-being of his church, verses 26 and 27 says that Jesus laid down his life in order that those who follow him, his church, could be presented before God as holy and blameless. In much the same way, you are responsible for the spiritual climate within your marriage. You're responsible to nourish and encourage Jennifer's spiritual well-being by being the spiritual example and the leader in your home. And one day, if God blesses you with children, their spiritual well-being will also be your responsibility. So Jennifer, if Daniel's responsibility for the love in your marriage, what is your responsibility? Well, verse 33 says that wives are to respect their husbands. So how can you show respect to Daniel? Well, verse 22 of Ephesians 5 gives us that answer. And arguably the least popular word in a marriage ceremony in our day and age is the word submit. But Jennifer, that's precisely what this passage requires from you. So let me ask you though, if Daniel is loving you the same way that Jesus loves his church, and he is constantly looking to your needs instead of his own, if he's consistently striving to meet your needs rather than his own, do you think you'd have any trouble submitting to him? I don't think so. You see, God wired wives to need love and husbands to need respect. But if we flip those roles around so that wives receive respect instead of love from their husbands and husbands receive love rather than respect, it simply won't work. A downward spiral begins and will continue until one or both decide to obey the instructions in this passage. See, God wired wives to need love and husbands to need respect. Obviously, you need to both love one another, but women are wired automatically to love in many ways. You see, God created marriage to be the ultimate picture of the gospel. Husbands are a picture of Christ, and wives are a picture of the church. Right after Paul quotes Genesis 2, where the two will become one flesh, Paul says, that this is a profound mystery. But guess what? I'm talking about Christ and the church. God's design was to have marriage reflect how Christ loves his people. Why was this such a mystery? Well, marriage was established and defined by God just after creation in Genesis chapter 2. 
But the fact that it was to be a picture of Christ's relationship with his people was a mystery until Christ established the new covenant and then demonstrated his love by going to the cross so that we could become one with him in a covenant relationship. In a covenant relationship, two become one. No longer does one live for his own interests. He lives for the interest of his covenant partner. So Daniel, if you and I entered into a covenant, your enemies would now be my enemies, and my enemies would be your enemies. And if either of us were to be attacked, we would come to the other's rescue, and we would never attack one another. Because of our covenant, we are one. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it describes our covenant relationship with God beautifully. It says that we are, when we are in Christ, all things become new, and that God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. At the cross, Jesus took our sin upon himself and gave us his righteousness in exchange. So like it or not, your marriage will give a picture of the gospel to a watching world. So my charge to you, Daniel and Jennifer, is this. What kind of picture will your marriage give? Daniel, you're to love Jennifer the same way that Christ loves the church. As such, you will give a picture of Christ to the world by how you love Jennifer. If you are tender and compassionate with Jennifer, you will show the world that Christ is tender and compassionate with his people. When you are concerned about and attentive to Jennifer's needs, you will show the world that Christ is concerned about and attentive to the needs of his people. By taking seriously the spiritual leadership responsibility in your home, you will show the world that Christ is our head and worthy of following. And by staying faithful to Jennifer in good times and in bad, you will show the world that Christ will never abandon his people. Jennifer, through this marriage, you will give a picture of God's people, the church, to the world. If you honor and respect Daniel, you will show the world that his people honor and respect Christ. When you willingly follow Daniel's leadership instead of usurping his headship in your marriage, you will show the world that his people willingly follow Christ's lead. And by remaining faithful to Daniel, you will be showing the world that Christ alone is satisfying. Of course, the opposite of each of these scenarios is also true. And unfortunately, in our day and age, too many Christian marriages give a very poor picture of the gospel to a watching world. Lastly, you must make each other the object of your understanding. Verse 21 instructs you to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Daniel, Jennifer, that means that you are to put the other's needs before your own. There's absolutely no room for selfishness in a Christ-centered marriage. Try to outserve one another. Study each other. Find out what makes the other happy and do it. Because if your mission is to make sure your spouse understands you and meets all of your needs, then you each will be miserable. But if you will instead make the other your object of understanding, you will both have your needs met by the other the way that God intended. Marriage was designed by God to be the ultimate picture of the gospel because in covenant to become one. As such, God must be the foundation of your marriage. When Christ is at the head of your marriage, as each of you grow closer to him, individually, you will be drawn closer to one another. You guys ready to make it official? Well, Daniel, before Almighty God and in the presence of these witnesses, will you, Daniel Thomas Cook, take Jennifer to be your wedded wife, your covenant partner? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, forsaking all others and in joy and sorrow, preserve with her this covenant, holy and unbroken until God by death separates you? If so, declare it before God and these witnesses by saying, I will. I will. Before Almighty God, and in the presence of these witnesses, will you, Jennifer Lynn Jaquith, take Daniel to be your wedded husband, your covenant partner? Will you love him, comfort him, 
honor and keep him, forsaking all others, and in joy and sorrow, preserve with him this covenant, holy and unbroken, until God by death separates you? If so, declare it before God and these witnesses by saying, I will. I will. And to those gathered here today to witness this holy occasion, before Almighty God, will you love and support this covenant marriage of Daniel and Jennifer? Will you help them to love and to comfort each other, honor and keep each other? Will you help them to forsake all others and in joy and sorrow preserve with them this holy covenant, holy and unbroken, until God by death separates them? If so, declare it before God and Daniel and Jennifer by saying, I will. I will. All right. Well, Daniel and Jennifer have chosen to write their own vows to one another that they will now recite. Daniel? Jennifer, it's hard to believe this day has finally come. We've been waiting in anticipation for many months and it's finally here. I love you so much and I can't wait to start this new chapter of our lives together. I cherish you and admire how hard you've worked to push through a challenging last semester of school. You've been a constant source of love and encouragement through both the joys and challenges of the past few years. And I can't wait to start forever with you. I vow to love you and cherish you as my wife from this day on. I will stay with you in the joy and the pain. When you laugh, I will laugh. And when you cry, I will cry. I vow to love you unconditionally and without reservation, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. I will never leave you or forsake you, and I pledge my faithfulness to you. I will depend on God to supply everything we need for life and godliness. I will provide for you. I will protect you and cherish you until death separates us. I affirm this in the presence of God and these witnesses. I love you, Jennifer. Jennifer? Daniel, we finally made it here. Yay! <laughs> um, after a very difficult semester of really long days and nights, we made it and I'm very proud of you for all your hard work. You're my best friend and my, and my adventure buddy. And so I'm excited that we can get to go on many adventures together in the future. I promise to always encourage you when times get difficult. I promise to be patient with you and listen to you. Even when I sometimes talk too much. <laughs> I'll stop sometimes. <laughs> and I promise to take care of you when you are sick and when you are healthy. Even when you've eaten too many garden salsa <laughs> sun chips. And you get by <laughs> I promise to forgive you always and to respect you. I'll always encourage you in your pursuit of film scoring, wherever that takes us. I'm going to follow your dreams with you. You were there for me when I injured my back last year. So I trust that you'll always be there for me. And I know you'll always be there to take care of me and help me get through it all. And Daniel, your willingness to serve others unconditionally, kind of just go out of your way, even when it doesn't make sense, um, has always amazed me. And I'm completely blessed to be marrying such a loving, gentle, and compassionate man. Very happy. And Daniel, I love you. I just love you so much. And I'm so excited that we get to start forever today with you. Yes. <laughs> Daniel and Jennifer will now exchange rings as a token and pledge that they will faithfully perform these vows. If you want to get the rings, we'll proceed with the ring ceremony. The wedding ring is a symbol of the covenant you have willfully entered into with one another. The precious metals show that your covenant is your most precious possession, and the unending circle symbolizes that your covenant will never end. Jennifer, do you accept this ring as a sign of Daniel's affection, sincerity, and fidelity, and wear it as a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and fidelity toward him? If so, answer, I do. I do. Daniel, please place this ring on Jennifer's finger and repeat after me. This ring I give you. 
This ring I give you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. <laughs> Daniel, do you accept this ring as a token of Jennifer's affection, sincerity, and fidelity, and wear it as a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and fidelity toward her? If so, answer, I do. I do. Jennifer, please place this ring on Daniel's finger and repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. All right. <laughs> At this time, for uh, to illustrate their union together and the covenant of becoming one, we'll have a sand ceremony. So take this one. Mm -hmm. And as the two different colors of sand pour into the bottle, um, they're inseparable. You can't unseparate these two when they're poured together, just illustrating exactly what we've talked about this morning, this afternoon, a covenant of two becoming one. So go ahead and pour that in there. Jennifer, a little bit. Yeah, alternate back and forth. You can pour a little bit larger amount. I think he's out. I'm out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the. But not all, so they won't look so good. Yeah. Well, I know. That's a lot. We can always okay. do more afterwards. Okay. All right. If you guys want to take your place back out there again. Well, Daniel and Jennifer, you have heard the words about covenant and marriage. You've exchanged vows. You've made promises to one another and celebrated your union with the giving and receiving of rings. It is at this time that I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Daniel, you may kiss your bride.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Cook. Yeah. 